Coming up on Rob on the Road, 99 stops. It's the world's smallest mountain range, and it's right in our own backyard. We'll hike to the top of the Sutter Buttes for some panoramic views. Oh my gosh. Tell us Plus, the Kasunas River is you know, the last undammed river that flows from the Sierras into the Delta. We'll explore the pristine wetlands and incredible wildlife at the Kasunas River Preserve and go inside the fully restored Marvel of Modesto, the McHenry Mansion. I think that this might be my favorite room in the home. Rob on the Road, 99 Stops, starts now. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring California. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Rob on the Road, 99 Stops. Once again, we're exploring interesting stops all along Highway 99, once known as California's Main Street. Now coming up, we'll take you to the McHenry Mansion in Modesto, loved far and wide as a Victorian treasure. We'll take you inside for a stunning tour that's coming up ahead. But let's begin with some beacons of beauty in Northern California. The Sutter Buttes, just about 30 miles north of here, named after California pioneer John Sutter and described by some as the world's smallest mountain range. The Buttes are closed to the public, but you can still explore them on private tours with Middle Mountain interpretive hikes. Those are the folks who allowed me to share the buttes with you on a three mile hike filled with unforgettable views. Look at this beautiful setting that we've brought you to today in the middle of the Sutter Buttes with one of the guide hikers here and just an expert of the Sutter Buttes, Laura Lush. Good to see you. Nice to have you out here in our favorite place. Oh, I see why it's your favorite place. Thank you for bringing us in here. Well, we're thrilled to be able to share the Buttes with you guys today. I'm so glad. So what are we going to see? Oh, we're going to see the buttes. You're going to see some neat rocks. You're going to go for a hike and see some plants. And we're going to get way up in the middle of the buttes. Middle Mountain Interpretive Hikes handles all of the hikes here because this yes. is not open for people just to come in. Correct. This is private property. In fact, we're accessing a property that's four miles off the county road. So we're excited to bring you in where most people can't go. All right. I like that. Ready to go. Thank you. All right. Let's take off. All right. Next step. We've just come through the gate at the Dean Place, and everywhere you look is picture perfect. I can't get over this, Laura. We never do. <laughs> you never do. We never do. That's why you keep coming back with everybody here. And I see a horse in the distance coming up. This is Margaret Sands. She's your hostess. This is her property. She's the third generation of this land. Her mother's maiden name was Dean. This is the Dean Place. Hi, Margaret. Hi, how are you today? Uh, who's your horse? This is Allie. Hi, Allie. Oh, he even has treats for her. Hi, I saw the horse, so I got treats. <laughs> Hi, baby. Is this how you roll out here? <laughs> this is how we usually meet Margaret on a hike. How do you feel about sharing your land? Oh, it's my father that said it the best, but he said we should share it. And I thought, yeah, that's true, because people love it. You know, and every time I'm out and about and I come across a hike, I, I always get thanked. If you could describe the Sutter Buttes, how would you describe them? Well, I would say they're much more rugged than you would think. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and, uh, and I just love the peace and quiet that's up here. On these hikes that people can sign up and, and take, they take you away from everything on the everyday norm and they immerse you in nature. And I like to say that they're out of place and out of time. Mm. You're away from your normal life. You kind of disconnect. You've stepped back 150 years. And yes, you're surrounded by nature. So you said we've stepped back 150 years. That's because this land really hasn't hardly changed. Correct. It's a working cattle ranch. All right, let's walk. You 
hear the birds chirping everywhere you look you see beauty and we had to stop here because look at this North Butte how high is this North Butte is about 1840 feet tall give or take we can't go to the top because it's too dangerous it's a little tough to do this time of year and we don't go that face anyway because it's not real stable I wanted to stop here and talk geology because you see it yes the origins of the buttes the buttes are an extinct volcano they're a volcano in the middle of the Central Valley, and that in and of itself makes them incredibly unique. When you drive up and down the Sacramento Valley, you see this lump, and it's an old volcano. And so you come up here and you see this, and this is called an andesite dome. The most common volcanic rock on the planet is andesite, like Andes Mountains, mm -hmm. and this is andesite. And to give you a little perspective on the type of volcano that the Buttes were, because they are extinct, it's like Mount St. Helens. It's a plug dome volcano where it was never spewing molten lava. It was blasts of rock and hot gas. Mm. Think Pompeii and Vesuvius, which was a plug dome volcano. Think um, flowing mud and rocks. Those are called lahars. And that's how the buttes were formed. These pushed up and exploded preformed rock and gas and ash, and if it was wet and muddy when it blew, um, then the rocks floated along on the mud to form some of the hillsides that we've seen. And this goes back more than a million years. Yes, into the Pleistocene era, about a million point four to a million point two years ago. Fascinating. Oh, and but that's in geological time, these are babies. That's why they're so rugged, because they are rugged when you start walking out here and you see all the rocks on the surface. When you drive, through California, Northern California, and you see the Sutter Buttes. They are very pretty, but when you get up close, they're spectacular. And they're totally different. And you look up at the columns of rocks up at the very top with the vultures circling over them, mm. and you see the plants below, and you really don't realize you're in the middle of rice fields and prune orchards. All right, we almost made it. Worth every step, huh? Yes, always. Oh my gosh. Told you. When you stand here and this is your view, what goes on in, in your brain? From this particular view where I don't see much humanity involved here, I like to think, what did this look like 250 years ago? Maybe this. Yeah. And I hope it stays that way. I think that's all of our sincere hope is that it stays this way. Thank you, Laura. Absolutely. Thank you. What a pleasure. We truly appreciate you coming out here and helping us share the word about the Buttes. Our next Highway 99 stop is the Kasumnas River Preserve off of Highway 99 near Galt. It's a wildlife habitat on agricultural wetlands filled with beautiful hiking trails where nature lovers can see an amazing array of birds as they stop over during their long journey along the Pacific Flyway. hiking trails. They're everywhere here at the Kasumnas River Preserve. There are about four of them and they equal about 11 miles. And this is Dewitt Zaleka. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out so early this morning. But boy, what a morning. Yes, what a gorgeous morning. There are 50,000 acres here at the Kasumnas River Preserve. It's right off of 5 and 99. Yes. We pass it all the time and it rarely is noticed. It's still a bit of a secret and you know it's just an amazing spot full of birds this time of the year with the Pacific Flyway. All the hiking trails are accessible from sunrise to sunset. Uh -huh. They're completely free. 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 Yep. And so you see people hiking here all the time? All the time. 
We just ran into Karen Bumgardner and she was out here taking pictures of some of the beautiful birds. What a sight. It's beautiful out here. I love the serenity of it and the early morning light's nice. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. anyway. How often do you come? Quite often, probably this time of year, probably uh, at least every weekend to some preserve this particular one, often because it's local. Where does this water come from? The water comes from the Sierras, like all drinking water for Californians just about it's in the north. Uh, the Casunas River is, you know, the last undammed river that flows from the Sierras into the Delta. The it's last one. Undammed river, the last one. Fortunately, it was too small when we were damming everything else for drinking water, agriculture, flood control. So this is the last one. But also, this is the habitat that was originally here, you know, before settlement. And flooding was a natural part of the process. And these wetlands were part of the natural process, but they've become rare. These are jewels now. This is, you know, the sandhill cranes, when they migrate from the north in September and they come here, they're coming home. And this is what they look for. And where are they coming from? They're coming from Washington, Oregon, the Sierras, all the way to Canada and some from Alaska. How do they know their way home? I don't know, but they figure it out every year. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, we have a lot to see yes. and a lot to show, so let's get started. Okay. okay. If you manage all of this, mm -hmm. And you have to deal with the birds. How many different species are out here? Well, at the preserve, we have approximately 250 species, um, and uh, you know that's that that combines all of our waterfowl and water birds along with with other species. It's it's, it's a big number, so that's there's that's a complicated question because you have to know what each individual species requirements are. And so, How? Well, that's that comes from understanding each individual species, and what we try to do here is, and we try to manage the land in each one of these individual wetland ponds for a variety of species. So you have to try to actively manage for not just your dabbling ducks, your diving ducks, but shorebirds, all these other species that have to kind of function together and we try to manage for that. Do we, as we start out on more of these hiking trails, oh my gosh, I just love it because you're surrounded by such splendor. Look at the birds. Yes, in October, there's just a ton of birds. But there are birds here year-round. You always see birds out here, and it's amazing. You're famous for your hiking trails. We're standing on one right now. Do you hike out here? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's hard not to. You know, I mean, I spend my day-to-day -day life here, but you know, I'm, I'm in my truck driving around trying to you know do my day-to-day -day management. But whenever I have free time, absolutely, it's it's, it's a beautiful place. I have to tell you something. Sometimes I come out here alone mm -hmm. and I go to the end of that boardwalk and I just sit and shut my eyes yeah. and the world stands still and it's just the most peaceful feeling. What does this do for, I know what it does for me. And I got here and all of a sudden everything just stopped and stood still. What does it do for you, for your soul? Um. Be, it brings peace. It brings peace. It's quiet. You get to enjoy the surroundings of it. It's different than being at home. We are almost out to Wetlands Point, the beautiful roofless gazebo, if you will. And it is, to me, meditation point. What is it to you? Very similar, very similar. Uh, not very many people make it out this far. It's a little secret. So I, I wanna ask you, the birds here are so many different species. Mm -hmm. What is your showstopper bird? Is it the sandhill crane? Yes, it is the sandhill crane. I think that call is just so amazing. 
We're shooting this on a weekday, and, and that is one of the reasons why there are a not, not a lot of, of hikers out here today, but we did want to spotlight the hiking trails. But hikers, come on, get out here. And enjoy the beauty of the Kasumnas River Preserve. Exactly. All right, thank you. Thank you. You are just delightful, and your <laughs> knowledge is just infinite. We're lucky to have you in our region. Well, thanks for coming out and visiting. <laughs> and keep coming out. <laughs> and now the McHenry Mansion. Incredibly, this is Modesto's only surviving restored Victorian home. This beautiful place was heavily damaged by fire in 2011, but after some incredible restoration efforts, the mansion has been completely restored to its former glory come along on a special tour with the mansion's main expert. Welcome to one of the most famous places in Modesto, the McHenry Mansion, built back in 1883. And sadly, right where we're standing went through a major fire in 2011. But this mansion has been restored to its former glory. And we have a nice little private behind the scenes tour for you today with Mr. McHenry Mansion, they should call you for real, but your real name is Wayne. Wayne, good to see you. Good to see you. Wayne Mathis is the curator here. Been here for 40, 40 years. years. Yes. Why 40 years? What is it about this place? Well, it, it took a long time to get it to the point that I wanted it, but I would rather take the time and do it right than to just try and put it together. And it took a long time. And then, of course, we had to redo major portions of it as a result of the fire. But it gave us an opportunity to uh, refresh everything and restore things so that it's even better than it was before. And Robert McHenry, owner of this home? Yes. What did Robert do besides clearly be very rich. He started out as a rancher, uh, provided meat for the miners, and gradually acquired additional property and got into wheat farming and that type of thing. And then in the 1870s, he became involved as a cashier of the Modesto Bank and later became its president. I love to go behind the scenes and the room behind us, the front uh, parlor room right. is always blocked off with a stanchion. You took right. it down for us today. So let's go in. Thank you so much for letting us do that, by the way. This is just spectacular. I see you have decorated for the holiday season. Of course, this show airs year round, but right now you're getting a taste of the holidays. Yes, and I'll be able people come down and see the decorations and check out the house. Now, I see original, is this an original Bible? The original family Bible, which was given by the McHenry back to the house. So we were thrilled to get that particular piece. And it happens to be a birthday uh, or Christmas present of Matilda McHenry from her mother it, yes, it in says, 1883, the year the house was built. To Miss Matilda McHenry, by her mother, December 25th, 1883. Wow, that is fantastic. I can't believe that all of this stuff survived. Look at the ceiling. The ceiling work is just spectacular. All of the inlay, all of the molding, everything. Is this wallpaper or is it paint? It's wallpaper, except for the actual cove molding is, is paint. Um, but for the most part, it's wallpaper. Okay. All right. Well, I know that there are two things in a room around the corner that are original to the house, and I'd like to show them to you. So let's go. Good. Cool. As we leave the front parlor, now we're in the back parlor where I guess playing and there's a piano and all types of things happen. It's their everyday. Everyday living. Into the library and this is spectacular. 
These paintings are original to the home. A couple of, of the few things that really are original to the home, right? That's correct. You had a role with these hands, with putting every single thing in place in this house, every thing. That's basically correct. And there was a whole lot of time that I was peeling wallpaper to find out what was underneath and painting areas and doing that type of thing as well. So I definitely was involved right from the beginning. What got into you? What made you want, I mean, like where, where did this like um, healthy obsession come from? Once I got started, I got hooked and even though it took a long time to do the restoration, I was going to see it through. So well, you did I'm it. I'm still here. An interesting story about the carpet here at the McHenry Mansion, because when you ordered all of this carpet from England, it's not made, this carpet in the United States. That's correct. The Queen's Jubilee was taking place, and I think her order took a little bit of precedence, right? That's how it worked out. It did take us a while, and we had a lot of other things done first, uh, and then finally we did get the carpet and did get it installed. Well, it certainly is beautiful, and so is this room, the dining room. I have to bring you in here because I, I think that this might be my favorite room in the home. Um, I love the hardwood floors, and I just think they're spectacular. The inlay over here, is beautiful. I, I, I just love all of the wood. That was, that was part of the remodeling when the son moved into the house. He added hardwood floors in different portions of the house and we decided to keep it here in the dining room just because it makes it more functional uh, because it is possible to rent the mansion and have a dinner party here oh. in the dining room. We wanted to end in Robert McHenry's bedroom. Uh, it has been completely restored to the era. This is not the original furniture, but this That's is right. the furniture from the era. Correct. In 1976, it was at the request of Mayor Lee Davies, who wanted to see one of the last remaining Victorians preserved. He talked to Eileen and Julio Gallo and um, they graciously purchased the house for $150,000 and then put in a lot more money to restore the house. So the Gallows bought it and gave it to the city? That's correct. That's quite a gift. It Defin was. Definitely quite a gift. It's also quite a gift what you've done. You've given 40 years of your life to keep this shining beacon that really is the be all end all of Modesto. I mean, when people talk about Modesto, it's this is the this is the gem here. But it, it really is a gift that you've done yourself too. Well, it's something that I really enjoy doing, and so even though it took a long time, um, we didn't compromise on anything. We did it right. I tell you what, it is a stunning place, and as you said. Uh, this mansion built in 1883 is open to the public. So come check it out. We are right on the corner, the main corners of? 15th and I. 15th and I. And we're I. open every day except Saturdays because we have rentals, weddings, and that type of thing. Every day from noon until four. Okay, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you. What a pleasure to be here with you in Modesto at the McHenry Mansion. What a marvelous mansion. Thank you for joining us as we once again explore the Golden State. I'm Rob Stewart. We'll see you next time right here on Rob on the Road. I like to think, what did this look like 250 years ago? Maybe this. Yeah. How do they know their way home? I don't know, but they figure it out every year. Once I got started, I got hooked and even though it took a long time to do the restoration, I was going to see it through.
To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit robontheroad.org.